So I got an invite to this cool watch event at the new Breitling location in Chicago, and I figured that getting some hands-on time with some of the watches and getting some photos and such would definitely be a cool watch journalisty thing to do. That was Thursday, December 2nd, and I'd basically been out of commission until I started writing this script on Sunday, December 5th. I finished writing this script on the 7th of February, and the Breitling video still isn't done. I wanted to be able to tell you how long it took me in total to finish it, but instead I started pouring all of my energy into this video where I'm talking about why exactly it is that these things are this way for me. Because this is the type of thing that able-bodied people struggle to comprehend, but thankfully I'm not the first person to try and fumble through trying to explain it. In 2003, Christine Miserandino developed spoon theory as a way of trying to explain what it felt like to have lupus. She used spoons to provide a visual representation of units of energy, demonstrating the way in which a person who's chronically ill needs to pace and plan out their days and actions in advance in order to make sure that they don't run out of spoons or energy by the end of the day. If you're a healthy person, you likely never had to really think about the potential to just completely run out of energy in the middle of the day. You have the freedom of spontaneity and the ability to live your life without worrying about such things. On the other hand, when you're a chronically ill individual, a large part of life becomes about resource management and the resource in question is energy. Each day you could wake up with a different amount and although you can take the best care of yourself possible and do all the right things, for the most part, your days and your plans aren't fully in your own hands anymore. Imagine, if you will, so let's say you wake up today and you've got 10 spoons. What are your plans for the day? Getting out of bed? It's gonna cost you a spoon. Eating breakfast? That's another spoon. Oh, you're not feeling well? Gotta run to the bathroom? Spoon. May as well brush your teeth. Spoon. Yes, it's lunchtime. You have to make yourself lunch? That's two spoons. Eating the lunch you just made is another spoon. Doctor's appointment? Two spoons. Need to climb the stairs to grab a package? That's a spoon. You're already out of your 10 spoons and you haven't even thought about dinner. In short, everything is now all about the decisions you make. To the point where even personal hygiene, like taking a shower, brushing your teeth, they just may not be things you have the energy for for a while. The truth of the matter is that for a while now, I've been spending all of my spoons on survival. Doctors and dentist visits, constantly having to deal with insurance representatives and doctor's offices that are un unhelpful at best, and completely inept and incompetent at their worst. When you have a chronic illness, oftentimes taking care of oneself and managing their illness is practically a full-time job, especially in a country like America, which is notorious for its inaccessible healthcare and its treatment of disabled people. This doesn't leave much in the way of time and energy for work, let alone the pursuit of passion projects and self-actualization. This is what a lot of days are like for me. If I get to the point where I'm out of spoons, then I can try and overextend myself, but I will then have to face the consequences of that. In this case, that would be post-exertional malaise, or in layman's terms, being laid out on your ass having to deal with extreme fatigue and the complete inability to do absolutely anything for the next couple of days, or if you'd mess yourself up too bad, then your baseline energy levels could be affected for weeks up to months until you fully recover. Of course, that's only possible to do if one gives himself the rest that their body needs, which simply is impossible in our world where, let alone the menial tasks of laundry and figuring out sustenance three times a day, you have to work constantly, lest you want to risk homelessness and all of the difficulties and complications that come with it. This is because when you're born into a capitalist society without pre-existing capital, then your body is the only capital that you have to sell. So how does this affect you if you're able-bodied? When I went to see the gastroenterologist at Northwestern Memorial Hospital's Long COVID Care Center, the doctor explained to me that from what they'd seen thus far, it seemed as though long COVID patients weren't patients who had just experienced COVID, but rather they seem more likely to be patients who'd gone through COVID while simultaneously enduring an extremely stressful period in their lives. Having become ill in March of 2020, I was unable to leave my job until January 2021, simply because it would have been impossible for me to support myself. In fact, it still is. This past year, I have made a grand total of 100 Australian dollars, which after conversion and taxes uh, comes out to being somewhere around 50 or 60 USD. 
Now, it shouldn't take an economics professor to know that this simply isn't sustainable or livable, but by living under capitalism, we're subject to having to override our body's need for rest to the detriment of our own bodies. And we're so out of touch with what our bodies are actually feeling that the entire time we're blissfully unaware that our bodies are keeping score. I'm not trying to say that work made me disabled, but to not acknowledge that the hypercapitalist United States has a 10% higher percentage of the population disabled and the global average would be unhelpful and intellectually dishonest. I mean, you're going to have to start asking yourself some tough questions like, how did things get this way? What's the correlation between these statistics? And why the hell haven't things changed when we've been in the midst of a global pandemic for the past two years that is a mass disabling event? Now, moving on, I want to talk a little bit about the things that have helped me in better managing my energy. Keeping lists and calendars. What this has allowed me to do is to get a good look at what my days might look like before I actually have to face them. And this just helps me with pacing myself so that I don't overexert myself before having to do something particularly fatiguing, such as going to the hospital to have tests run. Now, I've never really been a fan of naps. I've always found that they leave me feeling more cranky and out of sorts than anything. That being said, I definitely found that just giving into my body's need for rest, even in the middle of the day as of late, has certainly helped me feel less burnt out on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I know that this is one of those things that really is only applicable to those with the privilege to not have to work for the sake of sustaining themselves and in a lot of ways that also goes for being able to pace and schedule things using lists and calendars because at the end of the day if you have to work constantly to stay alive you're not going to have the opportunity to actually slow down when your body needs it. Now the third and final item I want to talk about isn't really a tip on energy management so much as it's a suggestion on something you might want to mention to your doctor. Now, I am not a medical professional in any way. I am just a patient who has been trying to figure this out on my own. Um, and I want to share this information with anyone who hasn't been able to get the access to the healthcare that they need. I've been put on a medication called Amantity that I've been told by the neurologist at Northwestern's Long COVID Care Center has been fairly successful at helping long COVID patients with their chronic fatigue. This is a pill that needs to be taken twice a day, once in the morning and once at noon. And due to my chronic fatigue, I have extreme difficulty sleeping and that leads to me waking up a lot closer to noon. So I've been having only one pill most days. But that said, I have certainly found that the meds have helped my base energy level at least somewhat. Although it certainly isn't a full recovery, I just wanted to mention this if you've been looking for some relief from your chronic fatigue. This is a drug that's given to early stage dementia patients, but has shown promise for long COVID patients and with the complete lack of answers that are out there for most of us, I figured that this could be something that you could ask your doctors about and get some and if you could get some help with it, then that would certainly be useful. But yeah, that's all I have to talk about today. But if you found this video helpful and you're looking for more content on disability, long COVID and the problems with capitalism, then please do follow this page. I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for being you. I love and appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on my other social media platforms if you want to be more up to date with what I've been doing lately since it takes me a while to upload here for all of the reasons listed above. Um, but yeah, if you want to be kept more up to date on the stages of progress on these projects and videos, it's brandon.paul on Instagram and Brandon Palooza on TikTok and Twitch. But anyway, I will see you guys next time. Peace.